poker's legendary champions, next generation stars, and tireless ambassadors of the game, sharing their wisdom and guiding your journey to high achievement on the green felt. This is Chasing Poker Greatness with your host, Brad Wilson. Welcome, 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 my friend, to another episode of the Chasing Poker Greatness podcast. As always, this is your host, the founder of ChasingPokerGreatness.com, Coach Brad Wilson. And today's guest on CPG is Santiago Garcia Mencia, who is a poker author, lover of the game, and longtime media member. If you've been listening to CPG for the past year, you may recall a Twitter tournament I ran called Hashtag Poker Goat Books Edition that went a little sideways heading to the finish line. I woke up one beautiful morning with DMs from Eric Seidel, which under almost any other circumstance would have been a great way to wake up, accusing Jonathan Little of buying Twitter votes so that his book could win more matches. There were all kinds of ugly accusations from influential members of the poker community, and I ended up posting a public message and having Jonathan Little on the podcast to address all the silliness. The reason I bring this up is because Santiago was the human who initially pitched me the idea coming off the success of the original hashtag poker goat tournament and if the goal was to sell books and shine a spotlight on some amazing poker authors and their works that may have slipped through the cracks over time then mission accomplished. If the goal was to get Eric Seidel to come onto the podcast that one still feels a little like mission impossible at the moment. But the reason the idea seemed so obvious to Santiago is because of his immense love for the poker storytellers of the world. He's a living keeper of the best poker tales ever told, and the entire poker world ought to be thankful to have someone as passionate about preserving poker's culture and history as Santiago. In today's episode, you're going to learn how a single poker tournament went on to change Santiago's life forever, amazing suggestions for poker books to read, many of which you've probably never heard of, the story and inspiration behind Santiago's book, Cuentos y Relatos de Poker, which appropriately enough translates to stories and tales of poker, and much, much more. So now, without any further ado, I bring to you author, storyteller, and keeper of poker lore, Santiago Garcia Mencia. Santiago, welcome to the show, sir. How are you doing? Thanks, Brad. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure having you. I was just saying in the pre-conversation that I should have been smart enough to ask you to come on earlier, but for some reason, um, I didn't. (laughs) So my apologies on that. And the way that we met, let's talk about the way that we met first before we get into your story, because... The hashtag poker goat book tournament edition was actually your idea. Um, you persuaded me to, you know, put it together. So tell me about how you came up with the idea in the first place and what your experience was like. <laughs> Excellent. Yes, uh, it was a time uh, uh, during the pandemic, a lot of uh, contest like the best movie or the best actor so I thought there never had been a, a, a book a poker book contest so and, and I think I'm the one to, to do it because I'm a big fan of poker books and and I told you hey we can do this <laughs> I, I will do the hard job of selecting the 64 books and and, and then <laughs> you can go and, and I think it was was a great idea and and, and luckily I think it was a, a success it was a a nice tribute to the poker books. Yeah, um, it, I, I thought it was a success as well, even though um, the experience wasn't pleasant all the time for both of us. Yeah, uh, <laughs> a little bit of controversy, little controversy. Yeah, tell me about um, the unexpected controversy of hashtag poker goat. And for the listener, uh, the goat in that stands for greatest of all time. And to put it into context, I did a hashtag poker go tournament with players maybe six months before that that got a lot of traction and then santiago came to me with the hashtag poker go book idea which i was like yeah this this would be a fun little thing who nobody's going to care about this maybe it'll be popular but uh tell the listener what happened 
Yes, uh, I think all the players began involved, and even Eric Seidel and all the big names. It's at first they go only like like okay, they share the contest. Okay, I'm 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 here. Please vote me. And and then when the competition was going on to to, to the final sixteen, it's like well, I think the, the the nature of the competition in the players, we, we, we see that I think. Yeah, all hell broke loose. We <laughs> we got yelled at <laughs> from prominent members of the poker community. We got yes. like it. Uh, I know that I got called and at least an idiot and probably more so and like dm'd not not by uh eric seidel i'm gonna leave the names out of this but basically yeah, the that, that was a big disappointment i think uh, but i think that they author that 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 the name as idiot it was james mcmanus <laughs> to say the, the, the things but but this name and he, he told us that we shouldn't mix like strategy books and bios and you know like classic books that we 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 should make like a goat a different yeah. goat contest for every category but we and, have all the year to do that yeah see the thing is like he, he has a point in that like maybe it could have been structured better right mm -hmm. and that's that's totally my fault because i just randomized it because i thought like the last time i did this there was so much controversy over like the seatings and all the shit and i was like i just want to randomize this and put the brackets up that way nobody can complain because it's like fully random boy was i wrong <laughs> people <laughs> very much could complain and, and, and yeah it was a little disappointing i think in that the concept the idea behind it was to get these books and these authors more publicity so that they can sell some more books and we can celebrate some of the poker literature that's just kind of sitting there and uh for it to kind of go sideways was <laughs> it was <laughs> unexpected but it was like a really big success too i mean for yeah, I you know for the one the very few folks that complained I, there were many many people who praised it and loved it and loved being a part of it and uh, so I, I certainly want to do it again, um, and, and I'll, we'll probably structure it a little differently next time just for the sake of doing so. And I think my plan is to, uh, when I do Poker Goat tournaments moving forward, we'll just remove the one book that won and then reset it with everybody else so that, you know, we can have like a yearly champion or something like that. But it was a fun experience, and I did yes, get to wake up to, uh, to direct messages from Eric Seidel which that was exciting <laughs> because Eric Seidel, <laughs> Eric Seidel is my hero. Maybe it wasn't in the, the context that I wanted it to happen, but you know, yeah. it happened anyway. So going back to you, tell me what's your story look like entering the world of cards? Okay, well, my poker journey began with, with buying one poker book. Uh, I buy Theory of Poker by Sklansky. How like old were you? Or... How old were you and how are you? Uh, how old are you now? I'm 37 now. That's and easy. this was like 20 years ago, more or less. And, and the guy who, who I bought the book was like a big fan of poker books. So we, like we began, uh, we exchanged our phones, became friends, and he invited me to like a, a home game. He played with, with other friends, like 30, 30, 25, 30, 30 guys playing. How, how old and were you? Now, 37. No, no, then, when you got invited ah, to the game. It was like 25, maybe. 25, 10, yes. 10, 12 years 25, ago. 26. And where are, you, where are you from, by the way? I'm from Buenos Aires, Argentina. Argentina. How is the poker world in Argentina? Now it's like, well, the, the, the virus, it's stopped all the tournaments. Uh, we have like a long quarantine here, like eight, nine months. But yeah, we, we have like a, like a boom of poker, but it started like in 2020. Uh, like 10 years ago, more or less. Okay, like, so we'll pause there and go back to your story. So like you're, okay. you're getting in poker, you get invited. It's a little bit before the Argentinian poker boom. Exactly. Right? Mm -hmm. Cool. Also, I became like, like, like the new organizer of the game because they were playing like strange shootout where the three players passed to, to the final table. And I told them, hey, guys, you can be <laughs> reducing uh, and the, the tables and, and play like a regular tournament. Oh, okay, okay, you, you do it. <laughs> or they, yeah. they were playing like the starting stack was like 
20 big blinds. They say, no, guys, <laughs> we should play with, with 100 big blinds. We have all night to play. You say, okay, well. So I changed all the tournaments and became like the new, the, the new boss of the home game. And, 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 well, and till now we're still playing. That, that was 10 years ago. So it's like a, a very good group of friends that, that, that poker gave me. Yeah, and they just put you in charge. You were the suggestion guy, and your reward is now you get to organize everything forever. Congratulations. Exactly, yes. And, one, and also poker give me a family because in, in, in one of those trips, we say, okay, let's go to play to a casino because tournaments here began to, to grow and there were tournaments like 200, 300 people. And we say, okay, let's go to Rosario. It's like a three-hour trip. It's the biggest casino here in Latin America. It's in Rosario. It's called City Center. They play in the in the in the convention hotel convention. It's very big. It's like the, the biggest place here to, to play poker. And the tournament that time was free south. No no reentry. So I got kings versus aces and last half an hour in the tournament <laughs> and say okay let's well, what we're going to do tonight because I got good to, to have fun. We, we go out and, and that night then I met a girl, we exchanged our phones and, and told her, I'm playing here a tournament. If one of my friends came first, second or third, he's going to pay us the buy-in for next month to come back. And I say, okay, okay, let me know. And, and the other day, one of my friends got second. So he pay us the, the buy-in and I say, I call her, I'm going back next month. Do you want to see me? Yes, of course. <laughs> and we started dating. At the distance, like one, like like a, a year, a full year, and then she she moved in from Rosario to Buenos Aires, and that was ten years ago. Now we have two two young kids, so poker gave me also a family and and two beautiful kids. And so that's a great story, Santiago. <laughs> and but I will say this: Would you have gone back if your friend doesn't get second? Like, let's be honest with ourselves here. I I have a feeling you may have. Yeah, but maybe six months later, I don't know, when we come back to play, but we, we, we can back the next month because he pay us the buy-in. <laughs> That's so, the only reason. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let me, so what I'm saying is you, you met your future wife, you exchanged yeah. numbers. Um, uh -huh. Anyway, all right. I, I hope your uh, wife okay, doesn't only, listen only, to this because you're going to be in hot speaker. water. Yeah, you're going to be in hot water <laughs> if your wife listens back to this. No problem. No, she won't. She won't listen. No problem. <laughs> I got you. To to only see her. That's what she's Correct. Asking. Yeah, yeah. That's ah, what I'm saying. Okay. Yes. And also it happens because the next month, uh, or, uh, all, all, all our friends and then we, we, we never made a final table. And the next month I call her. Okay, let's, I go. Let's see us. And then she came back to one side. So yes, answering your question, yes. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. We circled around it. We finally got the right answer. Um, exactly. <laughs> so where did, you know, in this 10 years ago, you met your wife through poker. I met my wife through poker. You and I are actually the same age. Um, nice. Tell me, where did poker, is it Logia or... Logia. I, I, I don't know. I pronounce it poker logia in my head, but it's I fine, perfect. Okay. My poker head, logia, yeah. Okay. My head didn't go that far, but poker logia. All right. And exactly. I, I apologies for the butchering. Um where did that come about? Like why did you why did you fall so in love with poker ten years ago that you decided I want it to be a much bigger part of my life? And, and what was your life like pre poker? What was your career? Okay, I was in, in, in school back then, studying like a business school. Um, poker was like a hobby. I started reading books and, and, and I, I'm not, I also love to read books and write also. So I started sending some articles about poker to, to a poker web here in Argentina, like similar to Poker News, but here in Argentina. And, and they loved them. I, I remember the title of, of my first article was The Seven Sins of Poker. <laughs> and, and I listed like, like seven common mistakes. Uh, and, and I started to write in, in, in a poker web, but it was like a second job, you know. I, I maintain my, my, my study, my, my job. And at night, I write articles to, to, to one website. Then I started to write in a, in a magazine of poker that was here in Argentina. And so I became to, to write more and more. And in 2015, I made my first trip to, to Las Vegas. 
to cover the the main event and that was like a a dream come true it was 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 spectacular nice and in this whole time were you playing poker were you studying like were you you know playing cards as much as you were writing about cards and if not why did the writing about the cards attract you so much well i, I was playing but like the low stakes casino here i, I made like a what well, the first time i went to a casino i remember here in Buenos Aires, i got uh, 11 like bubble of final table but but managed to to cash so i was instantly hooked with the game and say okay i i have to play more tournaments and started to play more and more but variance it's it's hard i learned in the hard way the the, the hard times of of, of, of live park live tournaments no it's it's very hard to 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 keep the positive uh, uh, aspect and, and of the game so I started how did you to, to learn play tell, this. tell me about you learning that lesson because it sounds like a pretty brutal lesson yes like bad beats uh, bad beats were hard uh, bubbles a couple of bubbles uh, playing 12 hours in, in in a tournament to came back on day two and 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 burst uh, bust the, the the first hand of day two so it's like it's very <laughs> It's. I, I began to 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 play more online because it was what was hard it was hard for me. Yeah, but it still seems like you kept your love of the game going despite yes. despite going through the the difficulties. Exactly. Well, and and in 2019, I came back to Las Vegas for my second trip to mm-hmm. to to cover the main event again. Now with Poker Logia. and well, I, I played my first uh, WCP event, the mini main event. And when my aces got cracked by pocket fives, I say, okay, enough of, of tournaments and, and play for the first time cash games. And, and I was surprised to, to, to like them a lot. I say, okay, I can play here two hours, three hours. Uh, I have like very, very, I, I go there with my mate to drink, my music. And, and, and all nights I, 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 I finish the work in, 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 in the media and in the rooms walking. And and then two two hours to play in cash games and then go to sleep. So I, I came in love with with cash games. It was 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 a nice surprise to, to to enjoy them. Yeah, it's all the reasons why I've loved cash games throughout the years myself. Uh, so tell me about you know your dream coming true and going to the WSOP the first time, right? To cover the WSOP, what was that like? Any memorable experiences you'd like to share? Yes, well, the first time was in 2015, uh, the year that the one Joe Mc, McKeon, or I don't know how, how to pronounce it. And the first time I saw Phil Helmut, and he told me, hey, Argentina, and he started to sing a, a song of, 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 of a movie here in Argentina. I said, wow, <laughs> this guy is, is great. I, I thought he's going to be now, no photos, get out. And he, he, he saw me and started to sing, like, or, or Daniel Negran, to take pictures with all, 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 all the players that I saw in, in TV that, or, or in ESPN playing it was, 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 was excellent. I, I think, okay, I, I want to do this all, all, all of the years. I was very happy. And I played like the, here in, in, in Las Vegas, there is like a, a media free, free roll to, to all, the, all, the, all the media guys there. And it's free. It's an open bar. So imagine guys from France, Italy, Brazil, all laughing and, and drinking, and they have prizes to all the final table. And and in that first year, I got like eight or seven, I don't remember, and and I got like one hundred bucks to to spend on Starbucks. So I <laughs> buy like a, a, almost ten mugs from Las Vegas to 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 my, to my dad and my my friend. So it was very funny. I, I enjoyed it a lot. Awesome, man, and. What about your second trip? How, how did your second trip go? Is it as good as the first or better? My second trip was uh, where I played my first live event. Yeah. Uh, the mini main event. Well, I, 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 no, no, no ITM there. Then I play uh, a ray, uh, daily dip stacks, like 200 bucks or so. Uh, I got bubbled also, uh, queens versus fives. So that night I, I dream with pocket fives was... <laughs> And then, well, I played those two tournaments, and then I passed to, to I moved to cash games, and I say, okay, no, this is this is what, what I want to play, and 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 and, and I and I I win money, I won money in, in cash games, so okay, no, no, 
for now, <laughs> only cash games because tournaments was very, very hard. And, I, and also, I don't have more, more, uh, a lot of time to play tournaments because I have to work. <laughs> I'm also walking from the, the giant uh, Amazon room, Brazilian room, walking, making interviews. So there is no big time to, to play tournaments. So cash games, maybe one hour, two hour, and go to bed to, to rest. So it's perfect. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It, it seemed like you were playing more on your second trip instead of doing more of the media side, but I guess you were just doing both on, the, on your second time. Exactly. Yes, it is both. It's like two intense weeks today. It's like the day, uh, maybe it's 24 hours, but you are sleeping only four or five because it's intensity to, to, to maximum level. So tell the listener, because my audience is wide majority American, tell the listener about, you know, Poker Logia and mm -hmm. what it does, what the purpose of it is, all these things. Okay, Pogologia, uh, well, it started in, in 20, uh, like 20 years ago, more or less. And it's like oh. a poker news, but from Argentina. It started uh, covering live tournaments from, from Buenos Aires, uh, travels to, all the, to, to all, the, all the different casinos here in Argentina. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's also news, uh, strategy. Uh, I write reviews of poker books there. Uh, we, we recommend like poker movies or poker TV shows, all related to poker we have there. <laughs> very, very wide, but all poker related. So it's basically Argentina's poker news, pretty much. Exactly. Yes, yeah, that's a good definition. And why books? You know, because you're the, like I said before, you know, you're the brainchild behind hashtag poker goat book edition. Why do you love books so much? What is, is it about books? Well, I also, I, I, I love reading books from, I'm like 15 in, 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 the, in, the, in the school. I love reading books. And, and when I discover the first poker books, like Harrington and, and Gus Hansen, Every Hand Revealed, it's like pure entertainment, uh, direct to, 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 to like my passion. So it's, it's, it's perfect because you don't know, you you have strategy, but you have also bios, you have novels. There are plenty of poker novels that nobody knows, but there are plenty and very entertainment. So uh, I think there's a wide uh, world of books to, to, to know. And, and maybe my, my, my mission in Twitter and in Pokerlogia is, is to tell all, 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 the, all, the, all our followers, okay, look, you, you can read this, that is excellent. You can read this. So I made a long article in the news. Uh, in, in Poker Logia, and I, and I separate, like in the Poker Goat, but very complete, classics, novels, and, and, and I hear, I, I made like a selection for you. So when you, when you want, I, I can read my three top uh, books from each category. So for, for send, your listeners. Yeah, send me, send me that list, and we'll put it on the show page so that the listener can visit your show page and visually see it and click through. Okay, perfect. There are more than 400 books, so the list is long. But for <laughs> you, for this interview, I select only three for each category. So when, when you want, I, I can read them. Perfect. Yeah, we'll do it in the lightning round at the, at the end of the interview, while, right before we, we close up shop. In a world where a fish dog bets the flop, and you don't know what to do, one man Coach Brad Wilson has a surefire plan to neutralize flop leads and rip that dunk to shreds. Nuffle. Available now. Go to chasingpokergreatness.com slash nuffle. Rated R. Tell me, what's the most unexpected thing that's come from your journey through the world of cards? Mm, nice, nice question. Well, first, I never thought that I, I'm going to, to meet my wife in, in a poker tournament that was very unexpected. <laughs> and also, uh, when, when we go to the doctor to see our uh, obstetrician to, to, to our, our first kid, I saw him and I said, you, you play poker. So <laughs> the doctor of my kid was also a poker player. So it's like, insane how, how poker always managed to 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 came in my life so it, it's insane but well i love it 
I'm a big fan of poker, as you know. Yeah, I mean, it's. I think the the game is loved. It, it's clearly a part of Americana, just in our lexicon of speech idioms that are, relate to poker, playing fast and loose with the facts, um, all the things like this that are just in the language that like everybody uses, and nobody really stops to think about why these phrases exist. It's just it, it's woven into the fabric of our society, at least here in America, and it sounds like in Argentina as well. Yes, yes. I think obviously the game is very American, but here we we add like a, a little bit of passion of the game. No, we 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 shout. Well, help you has passion. Yes, you're right. You're right. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> he, he danced. He danced samba. I, I saw it. Is not it so that good, kind of passion? So what good. kind of passion are we talking about? No, no. I'm talking like like when when the guys are all in in a tournament, they stand up and okay, give me a jack, give me a jack, and they yeah, shouting a lot. Or the bad beats, maybe, yeah, they, they don't take it so good here. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, what I'm saying. Sure, yeah. Maybe, maybe some insult some, sometimes. <laughs> yes, some Helmuthian reactions exactly. to some bad beats. Yeah. Yes. yes understood, yes, yes. understood. You have also recently written a book, so let's talk about that. You finally... Instead of promoting authors, you decided to join the ranks of a poker author yourself. So let's tell the listener about this book that you cooked up. Exactly. Yes. Well, I always wanted to to write my my personal book, but I'm not such a good player to write about a strategy. So I decided to to write about short stories because there is no no book in Spanish about short stories of, of poker. They are two or three in, in English, but there is no one in, in, in Spanish. So I decided, okay, I could do, I could, I could do this, and start writing like six months uh, in the past during the pandemic because I have like all, all day lockdown here, and, and in the nights I began to write. I, I enjoy it, and and team up with a, with another journalist here from Argentina. It's called Matias Cesari, and and the funny thing is I never met him. We we wrote we wrote the book the both of us but I never met him in person because he lives in he lives in another in another province it's like four hundred miles away but we're super friends and and we do it like this he sent me his, his tales I sent him his my my short stories and we we, we said okay when we have both ten short stories let's select the the best ones and 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 create the book and then happened this. Uh, Happened, uh, Damian Salas from Argentina won the, the main event of the World Series of Poker. And his story was like that his child, his young child, made him like a, a, a cardboard with chips, plastic chips, and told him that this year you, you're going to win a bracelet. And he traveled to Ross Badop first with the bracelet <laughs> of cardboard and then to Las Vegas. To, to 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 the heads up to Joseph Herbert and won it was the first uh, Argentinian to to win the main event. So I said, okay, I have to write about this. I write a short story about his his career and sent him to to Damien and he said, okay, you make me cry. This is the first, the, the best gift that that a poker player gave me. So I told him, okay, Damien, you like it? You have to write la, an introduction for my book. So we have the, the, the introduction of Damien Salas and it's perfect to, 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 to the book, you know, to, to marketing and to it's, pre, it's, it's perfect. So it was like, 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 like the final push to, to, to go and, and full time with, with the book. Yeah, it's, you know, this is something that I talk about a lot to the folks who take my courses. You know, when it comes to accountability, it, it's much harder to not show up when, you know, you've got this person that's written the intro. You've got this person who, you know, story you've written and like they're super pumped and excited and emotional about this book being released. Well, now you got no choice. There's no backing out at this point. You got to get it done, right? Exactly. No, and I think it's the perfect time to to write a book if, if you want because Amazon uh, facilitates all. You, you, you can write your manuscript in, in, in Word on whatever you program you want, you can upload to Amazon and you have your book in two or three days and Amazon sell it to all the world. So the system works perfect. My cousin from Spain, 
uh, bought the other day 10 copies for, for, her, for his friends and he received them the other day. And, and I never do, do anything. <laughs> it's all Amazon work. So I, I know you, you, have, you, you, you are wanting to write a book. So it's the time to do it, my friend. I I want many things to be honest with you. I, I want I want many things. I've created I've created at this point five courses, and I think I, I want to create at least five to ten more. Um, I want to write a book. I want to have a daily show. I want to travel around the United <laughs> States and like have chasing poker greatness retreats and workshops and meetups. Um, I want to play on live streams. I want so many things. I, I want to make more YouTube content. Yeah. Um, I don't lack for wanting things to do. No, but maybe I think a good idea is like uh, select. You have great uh, guests in your show, great players. So maybe like the, the best answers or the best thoughts and, and, and you can make it like a compilation from all the, the, the learnings of the great poker players. I think it's a very good idea. Yeah, I so it's funny you should say that because I've had the same idea. Um, I'm actually getting a lot of my episodes transcribed. And then once uh -huh. the transcription process is sort of wrapping up, I think that's low hanging fruit for releasing a compilation book just full of greatness bombs from all my guests kind of put together and wrapped in a nice little package. I think that's that that's a great idea and something that uh, I always say this. I was this is how I get myself in trouble. I don't think it would be too much work, but every time I say that about any project, it's always way more yeah. work than I ever imagined it would be. No, no, it's work. Obviously it's work, but when you have your own book in your hands and, and, and you have like all the great feedback, it's, uh, it's worthy. You, 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 my, my advice is go Brad. And, write it. <laughs> and compile it <laughs> yes it's it'll come it will come eventually hopefully hopefully in the near future within the next couple of years would be good any other stories that resonate with you uh what about your co-author what's your what's a story that really resonates with you and you think that would the listener would enjoy well he, he began writing but like short tales during the, the pandemic Mm -hmm. And one of them was very popular, and the name was, Do You Remember When We Were Happy? And, and he wrote about all the nostalgia of, of, of like, talk, uh, touching cards, touching chips, because here we, have, we were, like, eight months without playing and without seeing friends. So mm -hmm. th this tale was very popular in social media, and I told him, Hey, Matias, you, you should compile all these short tales and write a short book. And he answered me, no, alone, I will not do it. Come with me, write more stories by yourself, and together we can, we can create this book. That was last year. <laughs> and now we have the, the, the book finished, but I never uh, met Matthias. <laughs> it's like a friend, but all WhatsApp, all, all, all virtual talk, but I never met him face to face. Yeah, that's, that's a very emotional title. Uh, do you remember when we were happy? Exactly, yeah. I while you said that, you know, it kind of struck a chord with me because I, I remember the first time I played poker with a bunch of my employees or not employees, but coworkers at Applebee's. Um, we mm -hmm. got together and played like 50 no limit or 25 no limit or something with those bicycle chips that were very light. And we probably didn't <laughs> even know how like the buttons worked or anything like that. But I remember playing and I think I won like a hundred bucks or something. And that was the first time that I had ever played poker live for actual money. And it, I remember it very clearly. I remember the first yeah. time I played in a card room. It was at the Daytona Kennel Club, $2 limit. And that was it on all streets, just $2. So like, no, like no one, two, <laughs> just all, small chips, poker. all white chips. Yeah. All white chips. And you know, I like, I remember that like it was yesterday and just like, it was awesome. It was amazing and something that you know, a feeling that doesn't really happen <laughs> that much anymore <laughs> playing for, um, you know, way, way higher stakes in live poker and even online, you know, I, I think there's something really great about the first time and high emotions, just amazing, amazing memories. Yes. Nice. 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 Nice memory. Happy memories that you, you always remember.
Yeah, always. I'm gonna add that question to Chasing Poker Greatness, by the way. The <laughs> tell me the story <laughs> the first you. time you played poker. Yeah. One one of your uh, questions here in, in the pod uh, inspired me to to write one short story because oh, really? the name yeah the name is uh, educating the player and 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 I talk uh, uh, like the cardboard what 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 the phrase is to put in in the cardboard of a poker room and I mm -hmm. listed like six things <laughs> I can read them I can read them sure go ahead the phrases are first. <laughs> wait a second that's the first uh, phrase wait a second no <laughs> <laughs> the first one respect the women okay obviously i have like two or three paragraphs but i, I will read only the title sure first, respect the women at the table second one treat nice the dealer third one don't make explanations about your move third one <clears throat> Four, the fish is your friend. Take care of him. And the last one, please don't tell bad beat stories. That are the, <laughs> the, the six titles. <laughs> Obviously, I, I, I expand each other, but it, it was w w one of the short stories because of you. Awesome. That's, that's really good to hear. And I'm glad for the first bullet point of treat women well and treat dealers exactly. well and with respect because this is. Yeah, it's number one thing that will set me off like a rocket um, just at the poker table. I just, ugh, it drives me insane. Um, <laughs> I see your face. <laughs> yeah, you can tell my demeanor just yeah. thinking about it, how, how much it matters <laughs> to me. Um, I want, in, in another short story, I imagine Rounders 2 also. I imagine like Mike going to play the, the World Series of 98. And playing mm -hmm. with Scotty Wynn in the in the main event, so that that, that was nice to, to to write about. How does Mike McD do? Nah, you have to read the book. Ah, oh, gotta read it. Ah, gotta read no, it. No, 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 no spoilers. Right. No spoilers. All right, um, Santiago. So we'll shift to lightning round now. If you could wave okay. a magic wand, change one thing about poker, what would you change? Mm. Eliminate the river. Make it to the turn. <laughs> <laughs> so no more rivers, pocket five. Exactly. No rivers. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. We make um, it to the turn. <laughs> now I think now seriously, no. I play mostly Texas Hold'em, and, and I think the, the game is it's perfect. It's fast. Uh, no, I like it a lot. The cash games, the tournaments, like no, no. In tournaments, no. I won't change anything. Maybe like. Uh, uh, you, the the rule that you can make all the revise you want or all the re-entries you want, I will limit it to only one or two. I think that may be uh, like like a small change, and also to play eight hundred, no more nine hundred, ten hundred, like max eight hundred. I would uh, that would be my my. Once I remember in in, in a casino here in Buenos Aires playing eleven hundred. Because they, they don't have more tables, so they, they, they put tables from, from 12, 11 plus dealer. Oh, super awkward. Yeah, not very fun. You're like no. just sitting on top of other people or they're sitting exactly. on top of you. It's not, not great. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm totally on board with the eight person to a table too. I mean, let's just let's make it six. I don't care. A six, six uh, is well. perfect. <laughs> let's get greedy. Six max. Yeah, let's get greedy. Let's play some six max. This is my bread and butter. Okay. Um, if you get a wrecked billboard, all the poker players have to drive past on their way to the casino. What's it say? Well, uh, plus the, the, the six that, that I mentioned, a new one. A new one. <laughs> yeah, a new one. A new one. Uh, have fun, I think. Stop acting like a, like a robot or like a super good player. Have fun, I think. Simple. Yeah, and, like and the he, old, good old days. Have fun playing cards with, with, with some guys. Maybe you know, maybe you don't know, but have fun. And even when you lose, try to have fun too because you exactly, get to yes. have the experience. You're going to the casino. You're interacting with other humans. You, know, you, don't, ha you don't get to win every single time. So mm -hmm. at least do the best that you can to have fun even, even when you get if smashed. You lose. Yeah, 
because yeah. you're spending your life force there, right? I've said it a billion times, but you're spending your life force at the casino. So you may as well enjoy the time while you're there. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And um, it's a game, you know, <laughs> we're having fun. It's a game. Well, for someone, it's a job now, but <laughs> it's a game also. I think that even if it's, if it's your job, and especially if it's your job, then you ought to have fun. Because you're, yeah. again, you're spending way more of your life than other people are at a card room. So, you know, why, why be miserable? I think that's just kind of silly to me. If you're miserable doing it, then maybe consider doing something else, right? Exactly. I agree. 100%. Um, what wisdom would you like to share to listeners of this show who are hell-bent on realizing their poker dreams? Wisdom. Uh, it too. Always, always learn the game. Uh, there's always a new thing to, to, to learn. There's always new books, new videos, new poker styles that you never have to stop learning the game. I think that's key to, to, to have success here. Always learning the game. Not only playing, but like to take some pause, analyze hands, talk with friends, see videos, uh, read poker books. They are not outdated. <laughs> They're always new books that, that came, you can learn with Poker Roots. But I think that to always learn the game, it's, it's key. Absolutely. Keep learning. Just keep studying. Be specific. Be precise. And study actively, too. I think this is another thing that needs yeah. to be emphasized. It's like, don't just passively watch a stream of a WPT or WSOP. Like a robot. Yeah, just like, you know, active learning is the way that you learn. Um, which means getting involved, using your brain, expending some energy and effort, writing things down, like looking into Pio, talking to other people, yeah. um, thinking about the psychology of the humans you're playing against, studying some data, all these things. Yeah, you're right. Um, so in the world of poker, what's your, what's your next goal? I assume it's going to be get this book out and get it translated to English. Yes. Well, yeah, the next steps are translation to English, one, uh, audio book, like, like audible book. That sure. will be yeah. another, because I think it's great to, to all the grinders there online, like be playing and listening some short stories of poker. I think it's a, a, a great combo. So we, we, are, we are planning on, on that. And then writing vo volume two. I, I have some ideas. <laughs> So start writing the, like the second volume, by the way, time to time. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're talking to somebody that absolutely loves all poker stories. So I'm certainly in your demographic. Uh, I, love, okay. I love reading the stories actually more than I like reading like a strategy book personally. I love the stories. I have some recommendations for you. I know you do. I, you, you, <laughs> you have so many recommendations for any sort of poker yeah. literature. Exactly. Um, What's a project you're working on right now besides the book that's near and dear to your heart? Oh, well, now I'm, uh, I, buy, I bought my first house, so I'm full of arrangements, uh, put the grass in, 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 in the painting. It's very chaotic and, and very stressed, but I think when it's all finished, I, it will be like a dream come true. It's my first house. And, and, and like to do all the arrangements by myself and, and imagine how the, the house will look. It's like, it's great. It's a very nice project now <laughs> in, in my life. Awesome, man. Congratulations. And thank you. It'll, it'll be done before you know it. It seems a lot, seems like a lot, but you'll get it. You'll get it ironed out before you, before you know it. Um, I now we're, so. we're to the question that you've been anxiously preparing for this whole time. If you could gift all poker books or recommend all, po uh, all poker players some books to read, I'm going to give you the latitude to give ah, more, than, okay. more than one. What would they be? Okay. Yeah, will you have time? Like five, ten minutes? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. I, will, I, I, I select like my three favorite books from each category so, so people can, can, can choose between it. Okay. I will start from... Poker Novels, Shut Up and Deal by Jesse May. The Only Way to Play It, Peter Alson. And Cards by Jonathan Maxwell. That card, uh, cash game players will love that novel. They, they should read him as up. 
Books from main event, Thinking Poker Tournament, Nate Mavis, The Thinking Poker Diaries, Andrew Brockos, and The Game Plan by Matt Matros. Personal Experiences, A Chip and a Prayer, Marvin Carlins, Vegas or Bust, Johnny Campis, and The Biggest Bluff, The Poker Gold Winner, Maria Konikova. Poker Math, the, ma the Mathematics of Poker, Will Chen, Essential Poker Math, Alton Harding, and Math That Matters, Owen Gaines. Mental Game, Mental Game of Poker, Jared Tendler, Poker with Presence, Jason Su, and The Poker Mindset, Matthew Gilger, or Hilger. History of Poker, Poker Pop Culture, Martin Harris, Moneymaker Effect, Eric Raskin, and Cowboys Full by our friend, James McManus. <laughs> he still made the cut. No bias. Yeah, exactly. Poker stories. He played for his wife and other stories. The man with the 100,000 breasts and other stories. <laughs> and dead man's hand from well, many authors, no? Bios. One of a kind. Alson and Nolan Dalla. Life's a gamble. Mike Sexton. And Once a Gambler by Mika Antonen. Cash games. All books from Ed Miller <laughs> and Small Stakes Poker Cash Games by Jonathan Little. And the last ones, like Poker Strategy in general, Play Optimal Poker by Brokos, Short Stack Ninja, Chris Wallace, and How Can He Fold from Jonathan Levy. I think if you're going to, to read books, this, and you, you, you have to start with these ones. And a surprisingly high amount of them have come ah, through my okay. path, my path on well the G on CPG podcast. Um, yeah, a lot of Brokus in there. Brokus has been on a couple of times. The Poker guys have both been on. Uh, Konakova has been on twice. So we got we got a lot of it covered. But the novels specifically, um, I'm interested in those because again, when I whenever I check out and I'm looking to kind of just escape from uh -huh. life and the world around me. I think like I love fictional novels. They're my favorite pastime more than TV and stuff like that. So poker novels. All right. I think I'm willing to you, give you, one a try. You should read cards from Jonathan Maxwell. It's, it's the book with most poker hands. It has like 100 poker hands because the, the, the protagonist is always playing cash games and, and, and the author writes all the hands. So <laughs> I think it, it's, it's great. I love it. Cool, man. I'll be sure to check it out. And um, while we, before we shut down shop here, um, any parting words that you would like to add? And then the final question is going to be, where can the Chasing Poker Greatness listener find more about you on the World Wide Web? <laughs> okay. The second part, you can find me in Pokerlogia, in, in Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. I, I'm the one who, who manages all, all, all the social media, so... The one answer, it's me. <laughs> so it's more easy than, than my, my, my personal handle. And the first question was? Any parting words before we shut it down? <laughs> okay. No, it's uh, that maybe it's the time to, to, to do what, what, what you like and, and, and try to, 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 to become your, your dreams true. Maybe it's writing a book or maybe a project, but to, to put the energy in and, and, and do it. I think that... that it, it, it's the time and, and we, we, we need to, to, to try at least <laughs> to become our dreams, passions, or objectives uh, true. So come on, <laughs> yeah, put the effort, put the hours and, and, and do it. <laughs> very well said. And not everybody, not everybody, I think, will be a winning poker player or a poker crusher in their life, but we all have different gifts and different talents. And there are exactly. other ways, other ways we can keep poker near and dear to our hearts and perfect way to close down this episode. Santiago, thank you very <laughs> much for your time and your energy. It's been a pleasure having you and I'm sure I'll be talking to you again in the near future. <laughs> Thanks, Brad. Thanks for listening to Chasing Poker Greatness. You can subscribe on Apple Podcasts or on your favorite podcast app. Go to ChasingPokerGreatness.com to get the newsletter, join the Greatness Village community, book a coaching session, or dive into the latest data-driven poker courses. Follow the show on Twitter at CPG Podcast.